Hi, it's Alex. Welcome back to my channel. I'm back in the old spot. Thank you so much. I have had such a laugh looking at all the brilliant pun suggestions. Um, they're not all puns, are they? But anyway, brilliant suggestions uh, following my last video, What the Frock? Um, you've all come up with great ideas for things like tops and coats and all the rest of it. Um, I've made a, a little note here of some of the ones I really liked um, but actually to be honest I'm now really spoilt for choice having gone from I don't know what to call them. A few people suggested uh, get your coat or I'll get my coat or get your coat you've pulled and I love that. Uh, one of the people that suggested that was Kathy uh, Hide and Silk who has a channel here on YouTube um, so go check Kathy out. So yeah thank you for some brilliant brilliant suggestions. Uh, top of the morning I really wanted to do but I'm in danger of doing a dreadful dreadful Irish accent uh, which would probably give offence to lots of people so I decided that I better steer clear of that and the other one was lots of people said hold on I've made a note here top it off and I was like okay top it off what's that all about but Jody Roundtree, thank you very much, gave me a bit of an explanation, which is in the US, that's what you ask for in a cafe if you want your coffee topped up. Now we don't tend to have that culture of kind of free refills in um, cafes or restaurants or whatever. So um, I couldn't quite understand why that kept coming up, but I get it now. So yes, lots of brilliant comments. Thank you very much, I've now got, yeah too many to choose from and also yeah thank you very much for all the great comments and feedback from the what the frock um two videos i've done now the indies and the big four and my next one will be vintage patterns as i said and i also said that i'd do two videos this week and failed yeah life has just been too busy this week so i'm afraid it, it didn't happen However, um, because my last couple of videos have been the ones going through uh, my pattern stash, it has meant that I haven't really been showing you what I've been making recently. And uh, there are a few things I've made and a few bits and pieces, so I've actually got quite a lot to go through. So apologies if this is a bit long. Um, you might wanna grab a cup of tea. Um, or a bucket of coffee like I've got. So before I show you the things I've made, um, one thing I did do, and I think lots and lots of people also did, was I signed up to attend the Fold Lines Sewing Weekender. And um, it was a couple of weeks ago now, so you know, you've probably heard all about it if you didn't already go. Um, but I really enjoyed it. I have to say, it was virtual this year and that was great because it meant so many more of us could be part of it than normal. Normally it's a um, weekend away in sort of August bank holiday in Cambridge and I think there's about 200 people all take their machines and sew together. It's always looked great. I've never been, I've always been very jealous. Um, so obviously it's not the same, but it also had some kind of bonuses, which meant that it did have a real feeling of community about it. On both days, there was also a sort of global Zoom chat, which was really nice. Lots of people came on and said hello, including me. Uh, that's the first time I've ever been on Zoom. So to do it when there were potentially a thousand people on there was, yeah, a little bit nerve wracking. Anyway, uh, I'm on a bit of a mission to push myself out of my comfort zone. So yeah, another box ticked. We were sent out an email on each morning with links to lots and lots of online content. And for me, day two was the day that I particularly enjoyed because day two, I felt like day one had a lot of people that we see a fair bit in the sewing community and day two was more for me more about the the sort of other bits around the kind of world of sewing that we don't always see so much so I really enjoyed things like Pigeon Wishes talking about uh, she's got an amazing machine or she and her husband an amazing machine how they fold all their fabric I loved absolutely loved the um, content from Alice and Co Patterns, mother and daughter um, team. They were talking about history of fashion and they went into some pattern drafting for a particular garment that they talked about. I loved that one. Um, Katie Cortman Art was talking about colour. 
There were all sorts of really, oh, Nina Lee talking about how she does all her pattern drafting and how she produces her patterns. Fascinating. I absolutely loved all of that. But when I had a bit of a think about it again, I thought actually, yes, you know, we do see some of the other people fair, popping up a fair bit. Um, but of course, not everybody that kind of attended uh, is necessarily somebody that loiters around the online zone community as much as I do. Um, and had it had been me a couple of years ago when I was quite um, nervous, I guess, really, of getting too involved in the sewing world, um, I would have found it just amazing. It would have absolutely opened my eyes to all sorts of people, all sorts of ages, all sorts of degrees of um, experience, everything. It was brilliant. So actually, having thought about it, I think it was a really good um, package of content and package of information. Um, yeah, really good. And in addition to that, the profits all went to brilliant charities and there was a huge amount raised. I think it was something like £22,000, which is phenomenal. And they would never have raised that um, on previous years, you know, just a weekend, not just a weekend away, but you know what I mean. Also really nice to see and hear from both Judith and Susan, who um, kind of represent the So Over 50 um, group. I loved listening to them talking and um, I really enjoyed what Susan had to say on the second day when she was talking about age not being a boundary to style and fashion and that is something I absolutely 100% subscribe to. Um, I don't see why when you get to a certain age you need to just be written off and you know you're supposed to just be invisible. No, not happening. One of the other advantages of being an attendee to the Sewing Weekender was that we were sent a goodie bag, albeit a virtual one, uh, and it had a huge number of discount codes for all sorts of fabric companies and pattern companies, sewing supplies, all that sort of thing. Um, so I managed to resist buying any fabric because I had pledged not to buy any fabric until the 11th of July, um, which was, I have to say, incredibly hard but I did treat myself to a sewing pattern. So I used the discount code provided to buy uh, the Somerset Tea pattern from Maven Patterns. And um, this is what I'm wearing now. I had seen a version when the pattern first came out by Lucy, who is Love Lucy on Instagram. I think she may have even done pattern testing for it. Um, and I really, really like it. I think the version she did is absolutely gorgeous. Um, so, been wanting to make it for a while. I wasn't 100% sure because it is quite similar to an itch to stitch. I have a real problem saying that. Itch to stitch pattern that I've made before, which is the Busan top. Um, but they are different. The Busan has pleats across the shoulder and I think it's a round neck, uh, whereas this has the pleats, or in this case it actually gathers around the cuff, um, and a boat neck or a bateau. Um, it also comes with a straight sleeve, so you don't have to have the, might be better on that arm actually, but you don't have to have the bishop sleeve. Um, and the bishop sleeve comes with both the short cuff, which is what I've done, and then also a longer one, which is, similar actually to the itch to stitch but um one of the things i found with that itch to stitch pattern which i do love i think i made two is that in the winter if you want to wear a jacket or a cardigan over it the pleat detail here gets uh means you've got a bit of extra bulk there and it all gets a bit cumbersome and a bit uncomfortable so um, I decided I wanted to make it. Also, I was tempted by Lucy's because Lucy looks, Lucy's looks really nice. Um, and I had this fabric on uh, my pile of fabrics to make something from. I bought it from Lamazi um, and I really, really like it. And I like the colour too. It's not a colour I wear a huge amount, but um, you know, 
I'm very partial to a green. So I really liked making this. I think the uh, instructions were really, really good. I very much appreciated the instructions telling you which pages to print out according to which version of the top you're making. I think more pattern companies should do that so that you're not printing uh, more pages than you need to. I chose to go for a size 14, which was more because um, my bust size and my hips took me into a size 12, but as is always the case with me, um, my waist always is a size or two up from where bust and hips are. And because it's a t-shirt and negative ease, I didn't want it to be super tight around my waist. So I went for a size 14 and I think that's worked really well. So that was really good. Um, and the other thing I really enjoyed about it was that the um, technique for doing the gathers around the cuff here is that you use shearing elastic. And I've never used shearing elastic before. I've always wanted to, I've been very, very tempted by lots of, um, yeah, wonderful dresses with sheared panels. And it's been on my kind of one day I'll do that list. So um, I was really interested to see that. I found actually it was really, really easy to use shearing for this cuff. So that was new and yeah, it came together really easily. That's the great thing about doing t-shirts, especially if you've got an overlocker, they're usually pretty quick and easy. And I will definitely, definitely be making some more because it's just nice to have, um, you know, these kind of tops are the sort of thing you throw on all the time, aren't they, all year round? Oh, certainly in the UK, because we never know what the weather's doing. Um, but it's nice to have something that's just a little bit different from, you know, like maybe a Mandy Boat tee that's just plain and simple. Um, I do really, really like the bishop sleeve. And yeah, it is a lot more practical than having that bulk at the shoulders. Um, the only thing I found was that um, I had this, I wonder if you can see at the back, this neckline sits up a bit high. And at the time I just thought, oh, it doesn't matter because I tend to have my hair down, so it'll be hidden by hair anyway. Uh, but a couple of days ago, uh, I noticed that uh, Maven Patterns have actually done a tutorial for how to get rid of that. So uh, I had a little read of it this morning. Uh, it was all really nicely explained and it seems very much like it uh, some people are getting that, some people aren't. It depends on which type of stretch fabric you're using and what your body type is. So um, yeah, it's all beautifully explained and um, I would suggest that if you have made it and you have had that issue where the back there is slightly sticking up, then um, don't be put off and go and check out their website and have a look at that tutorial. But yeah, really like this, really happy with it. It got me thinking about shearing. Having done that, I realised actually this was really easy and also by sheer, huh, excuse the pun, sheer uh, coincidence, while I was making it, I had YouTube on in the background and I was watching um, Andrea, who is called, is she from the pink door, through the pink door, I'll put a title, um, and she was making something with shearing elastic as well when I was doing it, so I thought, right, the sewing gods are sending me down to the world of shearing, so I um, went and had a look at the Ariana sundress pattern that I had. Um, I was talking about it in my what to frock, what to frock, what the frock uh, video, the one for the indie patterns. Um, it's very, very similar to a McCall's sundress that I've made previously. The only difference really is that the back section has a sheared elastic panel. So I really like that McCall's dress that I've got and uh, it was hot at the time. It's pouring down with rain now, but it was hot then. Um, so I thought, right, I'm going to give it a go. So I was all inspired and uh, on a fabric band, so no running off and buying fabric. I went and had a look through my stash. I've said before that I am um, not the girliest person in the world, so I quite liked the idea of making um, a sundress, which is obviously a very feminine kind of garment, out of something that, um, you know, might give it a bit of contrast, might not be quite so feminine. So I chose from my stash this blue camo fabric that I had bought 
from Abacans a little while ago. In fact, I think it was in their craft cottons. Um, and I was also interested to see how a pattern like that would work when it was all sheared up. So I'm really, really pleased with how it came out. This is the sheared panel, which is at the back. Hopefully that will be clear. Um, and I didn't quite have enough to do the inside, to do the facing in the same fabric. So I just used, um, you know, some other fabric I had from my stash and managed to just about get it out of what I had. Um, the way that the panel at the back works is that it's folded over. So you shear this sort of times two and then fold it over and then you actually run a piece of elastic on this top here just to kind of... Uh, keep that nice and stable. You know, it was quite a feat doing all of that because um, I didn't count the 29 or the 27 rows of um, shearing that you're supposed to do. I just did it at one centimetre intervals. Um, I also used a twin needle. I just thought that that, well, to be honest, I thought it might look a bit more interesting and I'm not sure it particularly does really. Um, but it, I wonder if you can see um, I thought it might make it a bit stronger as well. Um, yeah, I mean, doing all of that times two uh, was <laughs> quite a task on the eyes. And, um, you know, after a while it did get a bit boring. I was a bit kind of like, oh, you know, are we there yet? Um, so I can imagine doing a whole kind of top of a dress would be yeah a bit of a task uh but you know it was all entirely achievable i did hope that by having that at the back it would mean eliminate some kind of fitting issues around that bodice because you you know it is quite fitted and it's over the bust and you've got a seam you know like <laughs> like a princess seam going over the front there um and obviously you've got it buttons up at the front so you need that to all meet perfectly and you don't want any kind of gaping along the front so yeah my hope was that the sheared panel at the back would make all of that fitting a bit easier um and i can't say it did really uh so there was a there was a bit of pinning and yeah tacking and basting and all the rest of it but i got there in the end and i had exactly the same issue when i made the mccall's version as well so I think it's just nature of the beast. Any kind of fitted top is going to be like that. So yeah, I'm really, really happy with it. For me, I feel that that contrast between the um, camo and the style of the fabric works really well. It's Yeah, it's really very me. So um, I'm really glad that I made it. I just wish the weather would improve so we could go back to being able to wear summer dresses. But, you know, that's life in life in England. Just going back briefly to the sewing weekend, uh, during the Zoom chat, I said then that the thing that I was um, planning to make during the weekend was a short sleeve Melio shirt, which I was going to cut using um, some striped viscose fabric that I've shown you before that I bought from Material Girl Laura. And I was trying to work out which stripe I wanted at the front on the placket. It's got a concealed placket. And actually, I spent so much time trying to get that fabric to sit still because it's viscose and it was moving like mad. In the end, I thought, you know, this is supposed to be fun and not too much of a challenge. So I put it to one side, thought, right, I'm going to use that for something else. And I went back to my pile of fabrics that I've been trying to use and I decided to make it out of this fabric that I've shown you before that I bought from Lamazi. And it's this one here. And what you can't see is all the, uh, or not all, but most of the parts that um, are in black, like this section here, are actually um, embroidered on. You know, they're three dimensional. Um, and I really, really love this fabric. So I thought actually this would be great because a shirt is the sort of thing I'm gonna wear all the time at this time of year. Um, and I've made it before, so to be honest, it's a quick and easy one for me, and I just do like making shirts. Um, so I did make the version with the concealed placket, which is always what I will do, because you can hide any uh, dodgy buttonholes. And also, you can hide the buttons themselves, so you don't feel that you've got to go and get some special, you know, 
fabulous buttons or anything you know if you've just got cheap and cheerful ones in your stash it, it works quite well so it all came together pretty easy I stuck with the collar as it stands with the pattern which is a rounded one um, in the past I have made versions where I've squared that off and I think I do prefer that so I think probably next time I will square it off um, yeah I tried to get the little planet on the collar there um, yeah I, I really like this it's already been worn quite a bit the only problem I have is with the sleeve cuffs and it's not just this pattern I've had it with something else it might be the Cali actually I just find that this style of sleeve cuff here tends to when you wear it it tends to stick out a bit so rather than it following the line of the shoulder it kind of follows it line and then pokes out and I'm not overly keen on that and I tried to sort of just press it so that it, it wouldn't do that um, but maybe with a bit of wear maybe there's something I'm doing when I insert it so if you've got any ideas tell me because I'd love to know but other than that yeah really really happy with this shirt and um, I did put a picture on Instagram so you may have seen it already but it's the next day unfortunately I was interrupted yesterday and had to stop what I was doing um, however it has meant that um, today I've put on my Melio shirt and hopefully you will see what I meant about these cuff sleeve cuffs sticking out hopefully you can see it on that one and uh, possibly that one there too. Um, so if anyone has got any ideas on what I can do to stop that being quite so perky, um, please let me know. Um, but what I was going to go on and tell you about is that um, when I was in the middle of making the Ariana dress, I realised I needed to get some buttons. And I had to go uh, very near to Avacan in central Manchester uh, anyway to go and get my mother-in-law for something and um, so I thought I'd pop in there just get some buttons just get some interfacing and uh, not look at the fabric because you know I'm not supposed to be buying fabric and I failed um, yeah I guess it was crazy really wasn't it expecting me to go into such a place without buying anything I just couldn't do it um, yeah so Debbie, who is the manager there, said to me when I saw her, really nice to see somebody who wasn't a member of my family. Um, yeah, she said, wait till you see the linen upstairs. I was like, no, 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 I'm not going to. Um, anyway, it was the linen upstairs that was my downfall. Um, so I bought this. Yeah, just forgive me. What can I say? I'm clearly absolutely addicted. Um, yes, I bought this. I think it's probably some kind of mix I don't think it's 100% linen but how nice is this for the summer um, they had it in two colourways both were the same blue I think or if it was near as um, but the stripes were different this was the more vibrant and the other one was slightly more muted I've got a feeling it was more pinks um, but not an awful lot so I've got two and a half meters of that it was eight pounds a meter so it was really reasonably priced um i just couldn't resist honestly and then i went downstairs in abacan which is where they sell their fabric in sort of bargain bins and they sell it by weight and i spotted this which was in uh, actually in the craft cottons and i absolutely couldn't resist it it's got sort of origami boats on it um because it looks an awful lot like this which is Atelier Brunette by Bye Birdie now without a doubt the Atelier Brunette feels nicer is more um, dressmaking weight and this is definitely more craft cotton um, but having said that, this is definitely, I mean, it's actually very similar to that camo fabric. So I know I could definitely use it for um, making a dress or something. But yeah, I mean, I just couldn't resist. Somebody has been uh, a bit cheeky. Anyway, so that was that. 
um, complete fail on the fabric buying ban. And like all people, once I kind of crashed and fell off the wagon, as it were, I went completely off the wagon and came home and decided to buy something that I had seen online and been very, very tempted by. In fact, I bought two fabrics, one hasn't arrived yet, so I'll show you that another time. Now, I'm a bit disappointed by this, so I'm interested to know what you think and whether it's just me. Um, this fabric was described online as rainbow glitter jersey and obviously there was an image and it's striped rainbow and glittery and jersey and I thought it looked absolutely amazing and I thought I've not seen anything like that before and it was a little bit pricey but I just thought no that could be really wonderful and uh, my daughter loves anything rainbow or one of my daughters so I thought oh, I'll buy it a couple of meters and then maybe make us both a top a t-shirt or something like that um, and I can't say that it's been misdescribed and it maybe I interpreted it incorrectly but this is what has arrived it was from Flamingo Fabrics now it is without a doubt a rainbow stripe that's great and it may be that it looks like glitter but it's a digital image of glitter it's not actually glittery um, it's like it's um, white flex if I get a close-up maybe it'll be clearer so I'm hoping that you can see what I mean so yeah it has a picture of glitter actually it's yeah as I say it's like white flecks so it's really not kind of what I thought it was going to be I genuinely thought it was going to be glittery fabric and you know it was eight pounds for half a meter so bought two meters of it I feel like I've spent quite a bit so yeah I just it wasn't what I was expecting really um maybe it's karma Maybe I shouldn't have bought it. And that's what happens when you break promises. Um, so the I do still have a couple of other things that I've been making, but I'm only going to show you one of them. And that's because the other thing that I have been making recently is um, knickers or pants. So I haven't actually used a pattern. What happened was that I had taken a couple of craftsy, uh, or it's called blueprint classes, uh, that were taught by a lady called Beverly Johnson. They were absolutely brilliant. She was a joy. Um, and it was all about taking your own measurements and drafting uh, the underwear that you wanted to fit your measurements and your own personal preferences. Uh, nice and easy and brilliant. And I, uh, the first one, the first pair I made when I first did it were absolutely huge, ginormous, great things, you know, right up to here almost. And I was laughing my head off at them when I made them, but I did try them on and they are really comfy to wear. Anyway, um, I've got this kind of pattern down that I really like and kind of suits me um, or suits my needs. But as you may know, Blueprint uh, has now closed down and it's a bit awful because when they first started up, you had to buy the classes. They then later on moved on to being subscription service. Uh, but you bought the classes and you were told that you had them for life. So of course, when Blueprint um, stopped trading, lots of people were like, well, where are these classes? Where do we get our content from? Um, I did Google just before um, doing this video and uh, they have now been bought by a company who have said that anyone who's bought classes will be able to access them at some point. Who knows quite when and how, but that's really good news. Anyway. Uh, I did make a few pairs of knickers. I find them to be an absolutely brilliant way of using scraps and leftover bits of jersey. And um, yeah, I've kind of, as I say, I've got a pattern that works for me. But um, while I was sewing them, it, you know, I did think about whether I was going to share them with you um, and did come to the conclusion pretty quickly that I'm just not brave enough to be on YouTube 
in my undies. Um, nor do I think my kids would forgive me, to be honest. Uh, but it did give me an absolute renewed appreciation for those women that do that. And in particular, the person that came to mind um, is Laura from the Specky Seamstress. So I want to give her a shout out. And if you don't know her, she has a channel here on YouTube. She makes all sorts of things. She's absolutely lovely. And a few months ago, she did a video going through um, different free pants patterns. So I'm gonna put a link below if you want to go and check her out. She's also done swimwear. And uh, yeah, just wanna say huge amounts of respect to Laura and to anyone else who has put themselves out there for all the rest of us to learn from because yeah, takes a brave woman and um, she looks fabulous so yeah well done the next thing i sewed i can show you uh and this is the last thing so this is the stitch bird dress from the sewing revival and um, if you've seen any of my recent videos i have said that this was something i was planning to make um i want to make it out of the really nice linen i've got from with this cloth uh, but that's a bit special so my plan was to make a wearable toile which is exactly what i've done I made it out of this yellow, um, or, yeah, I mean, it's not even a mustard, is it? It's a yellow, yellow, um, it's like a linen blend uh, from Abacan again, from one of their bargain bins. Um, I really love this style of dress for the summer months. Um, I like that kind of, you know, you just throw it on and go. Um, this one has a couple of nice little details about it. It does have bust darts. Um, it also has the pleat at the front and then a larger pleat at the back. Um, I made a round neck, as you can see, um, but there's also a V-neck variation. So I really like it. Um, I chose, my measurements put me right in between a size 12 and a size 14, but they do fortunately give you the finished garment measurements. So I had a look at those and decided there was enough ease in it to go down rather than up a size. Um, and actually I think the fit is really good. So I'm pleased I did that. Um, does have pockets, you know, that's perfect. And in terms of the instructions, I find that the instructions from the Sewing Revival are fabulous. They're really good at walking you through step by step. So actually, this is a really good one if you're somebody who's, you know, relatively new to sewing and wants to just begin to make something with a few little details in it, but not too scary. So absolutely brilliant. I'm really, really happy with it. Um, the pleat detail at the back, she explains very, very clearly how to do it. And um, I've said before, I am a bit naughty. I don't always read the instructions. I tend to scan the instructions. I go, oh, yeah, right, fine, got that. Off I whiz. And um, I did that with the pleat detail. And I was like, yeah, that looks right. It looks really nice. Off I went. You've got optional top stitching around the neck band, uh, well, you know, it's a neck facing, which I chose to do and I was pressing it and um, all the rest of it. I thought, yeah, great. Really love that pleat detail. It was only when I came to take photographs of it that I realized that the pleat I've made looks nothing like the pleat in the actual pattern. Have a look. I'll put an image of the pattern up and then show you what I've done. That is not what it's supposed to look like. It's supposed to be kind of a, a diagonal pleat. Anyway, you know, rules are there to be broken. I'm really happy with it. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, what can I say? So, I'm certainly going to wear it. As I say, yeah, I'm completely really happy with it, really. But it does mean that um, at least when I make my second one out of the... Um, other the you know 100% linen the two dresses will at least have some point of difference about them and I'll do that one properly and buy the book but yeah I do really like it um one of the things that I was quite pleased about with it I have found in the past because I tend to quite like things with pleats and gathers sometimes what it can do is make the overall silhouette very kind of 
billowy and that's good because you've got a lot more ease and they're comfortable to wear but sometimes it can veer into slightly shapeless and sort of sack like um, but somehow I don't know how she's done it but somehow this has been designed in such a way that you still don't feel like you're in you know a complete kind of oversized bag and it's still got a bit of shape about it even though you've got all that extra um, at the back with the pleat <laughs> don't look at my pleat really because it's not what it's supposed to be anyway you know the joys of sewing um, I'm really happy with it and um, yeah I will get on and make the other one soon and when I do that I'll show you what it's actually supposed to look like so that is me done for today. I am actually halfway through making a square neck tee from Named Patterns, but um, I thought I'd, rather than waiting to get that finished, I've got enough to talk to you about as it is. Um, so I'll show you that next time. And uh, hopefully I've had a chance to make the right version of the stitch bird dress by then. Um, probably before I come back and show you what I've been sewing, it will be the next in the series of the What the Frock uh, dresses. So that will be the vintage uh, dresses. So um, yeah, hopefully that won't be too long. And in the meantime, please look after yourselves and thank you very much to everybody who has subscribed. And if you haven't and you think you might want to, that would be really good. Um, so yeah, look after yourselves and I'll be back soon. Bye.